intro music. Uh, another installment of way too many projects to get done in one lifetime. So this is the um, around 73 Cincinnati lathe. It was NC. It had a Accutron control. I don't remember, but we got rid of that a long time ago, and so it's just kind of been sitting here. And finally, so it used to have this hydraulic unit because it had hydraulic servos in it. We're not obviously going to use that, and that was all behind this lathe. So we had a lot of room, so we ended up pushing it around. So there's where the pad used to be. We actually slid it back and pulled this end out a little bit so we have some room behind it. So I think this is a 16 inch swing and then two turrets and it was like I say hydraulic we have to remove the hydraulic motors but it's got uh, a nice place to mount an encoder this is actually uh, it has a incandescent bulb in it that's how old this is um, but we'll probably just just remove this and mount a, enco a coder right back here in this bearing block for the sp spindle. But yeah, hydraulic motor needs to be removed. We've already removed a lot of the x-axis. We have to actually get in there and figure out how we're going to couple into the ball screw. It's in there somewhere. Um, but And it still needs a bit of cleanup. But now we have there used to be electrical boxes and that hydraulic unit back here but we made the uh, electrical box into a storage and then moved the lathe back this is where most of the electronics will go I think um, the servo drives and uh, spindle drive that's another thing is we're not sure we may, we do have a 20, I think it's 20 horse, yeah, 20 horse DC motor that will actually bolt right up to this. Or we might go with a, um, a three phase motor with a VFD, we don't know yet. We have both options. Um, we'll see, see what we have to do. What what and we hadn't decided yet. We do have a hundred amp um, DC drive that we could use with the DC motor we have, um, but we could just buy a, a like a we could probably do like a fifteen or twenty horse VFD uh, too. Uh, we might spend a little money. We'll see. Um, but the motor would mount here for the spindle. But yeah, there's still a lot of we still have to strip it down a bit, clean it up. Um, but I think it's in its final resting position. Um, I think the we're gonna I think try to use most of the control pendant. I think what we'll do is mount a monitor next to it, maybe I don't know yet, and uh, use the jog wheels that are there, and most of the switches and stuff will be usable. We might mount the computer behind there, um, the motherboard. We'll see. Um, there's everything still up in the air. Um, what's nice about so we'll we'll just need a small hydraulic pack to run this then, because really all we need hydraulics for is the spindle, um, gear shift, and clutches and stuff. I think it's a two-speed gearbox um, with a brake and the turret. It lifts the turret and rotates it. But it looks like it should be pretty easy to um, figure this out. It, I think it's probably binary. Like it counts up and down with those switches depending on the position of the turret. Same way with this one. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of excited getting back into this one again. It's a pretty solid unit. It was used for making torsion bars for tanks, as far as I know. A uh, local machine shop had it. We got it probably, I don't remember, maybe 
90s when they went out of business. We got two lays for $500. It actually cost us more to get them here than it did <laughs> to actually buy them. So uh, we took one apart because really this is a hobby shop. Um, so we have parts. Um, the ball screws are huge in this thing, at least the X is. Um, we have an extra ball screw. Actually, we have for um, the X axis, we have two extra ball screws because we had one in a box that was refurbished that we got when we bought the lathes. So, so yeah, uh, I don't know what we're going to use for servos yet on the X and, and Z, but uh, we have a whole bunch of AMC drives we'll be using. I'm planning on probably we have a analog board for uh, uh, Mesa 7992. So that's probably what we'll use. And I don't know what we're going to use for a motherboard yet. Um, but yeah, it's moved, I think, to where it's going to be. And uh, we'll uh, start tearing into it and get it. Uh, we got to get the ways oiled and move, move some stuff around so we can get at the... Uh, x-axis to figure out how we're going to mount a servo back there z-axis i think is going to be pretty straightforward because once we we remove the um the hydraulic servo the end of the ball screw is right behind it so we should be able to do a, a gear reduction or a direct couple depending on what we have for a servo drive um hold on here's the extra ball screw for the um z-axis um, uh, this was taken out of the other, uh, the other lathe, so it's, I don't know, it must be two and a half inches, maybe, give or take. Um, but yeah, and then a double ball nut that's preloaded. Um, so we have an extra one of those, and, uh, like I say, two extra for the x-axis. Um, one last thing, um... So this originally had a 50 horsepower spindle on it. I don't think we'll ever use that much horsepower. So, um, yeah, so that's why I'm talking 20. 20 horse should be more than enough for anything we're going to be doing. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it for now. Hold on. I think this is what it made most of its life. Um, granted, this is cut off. I think they were using it as a hammer. But I think this was the torsion bar. It got a spline cut into both ends, or however it got mounted. Um, but yeah, I think this is what it did most of its life, was make these things. It may have made other things, I don't know. But I know this is what it was making when they quit uh, using them. So... One last thing, this machine is old enough that it had a switch to go from metric to inches. That's kind of cool. No, I'm not going to use that. And if you want to know what they actually did to go from inches to metric, is they actually switched resolvers. <laughs> you see all of those contacts on that switch they switched uh it was actually gearing i think it it switched out uh two sets of resolvers one that was geared for inches and one that was geared for uh metric so i guess nowadays it's so you're so spoiled with being able to do everything in a computer that <laughs> This is how they did it back in, seven, in the 70s.